this week on Cruising New England. Pontiacs may be no more, but today we'll meet a couple of collectors dedicated to keeping GTOs on the road. I'm Paul Manette. Welcome to another edition of Cruising New England. Today we're in Western Massachusetts in the Berkshires to meet up with two guys who have a passion for Pontiacs. We're going to see some of their cars. We might even take one for a ride. All this and more on Cruising New England. All my life, I've been cruising New England, meeting great people, visiting amazing places, and discovering wonderful classic and custom car collections, nostalgic automobilia, and so much more. Come on and join our adventure. I'm Paul Manette, let's go cruising. Closed captioning for Cruising New England on Nesson is being brought to you by New England Recycling, waste put to work. Cash for Gold, the place to sell your unwanted gold and diamonds. Where you sell your jewelry is as important as where you buy it. We at Cash for Gold are gold and diamond specialists. We will buy all size diamonds, gold chains, rings, bracelets, silver coins, and even broken jewelry. Often we pay two to three times higher than pawn shop prices. We also pay up to 90% of the daily price of both diamonds and gold. We are the original, authentic, family-run Cash for Gold and have been for over 35 years. Visit us at 527 South Broadway, Route 28 in Salem, New Hampshire. Your special moments are something to remember. For weddings, portraits, and special events, contact Sparks Fly Photography. Hi, I'm Jim Grundy, your expert for old car insurance. For three generations, my family's been insuring old cars. And that means we know what you need. And that's agreed value coverage. Agreed value means in the event of a claim, you get the full value that you've insured your car for. No depreciation no deductibles, and no hassles. For the best coverage and greatest rates, call or visit us online for a quote on your collector car. Find out what's happening. Get up-to-date information as I travel throughout New England and beyond. To get exclusive information and behind-the-scenes photos, join me on Facebook. I'm Dick Shappy, and deal in the finest classic motor cars, cycles, and vintage parts to collectors all over the world. But we're right here in New England. Vintage cars are like vintage wine. Both get better with proper care and time. I offer a luxury experience that's by appointment only. So check out my website, classiccars.ws, or call me at 401-521-5333 to find your personal piece of history. We're back in Western Massachusetts in the Berkshires to meet up with two Pontiac fanatics. Dean Kelly, how you doing today? Paul, how are you? And Paul Bennett. Paul, how, how are you doing? Nice to see you here today. You guys have a real passion for Pontiacs. Dean, what ever got you started in Pontiacs? There's always been a Pontiac in my family ever since I was a child. My dad bought a 65 GTO convertible, brand new, and ever since then we've had one in the family. And what about yourself, Paul? Well, basically the same thing. My parents were Pontiac people, and I grew up at the heyday of 64 GTOs. And Everybody was talking about a GTO and I just fell in love with them. So guys, is the GTO the first true muscle car? Well, Paul, it depends who you ask. I mean, they had the Chevys, 409s, you had the 421 Super Duties, but those cars were basically special order that only people with a big name in racing usually got. The GTO was the first one marketed for the average person, for the young kid who wanted a car that would go fast, had some style to it, and it, from then on, it was like a hurricane. A bigger engine in an intermediate oh. body style. So they jammed it in the engine compartment. You betcha. All right, so now I understand this is one of the first ones made that we're gonna look at first. Correct. Tell us about it. Well, it's a 64 GTO. It's a tri-power, four-speed car. It's got tack and gauges and some of the rare options, but the rarest thing on it probably is the color. Unfortunately, Pontiac doesn't tell you how many colors they had, like Ford, but I estimate it's probably less than 50 GTOs were painted this color with Sunfire Red. So tell us about this car. What does it have under the hood? And, and get, let's get into some of the details of it. Well, it's got a 3.9 cubic inch engine with tri-power, which is three carburetors. It's got 348 horsepower, hooked to an M24 speed and a 355 Posi rear end. 
And the other rare thing is probably the Hearst wheels on it. And everybody asks, is Hearst available from Pontiac? Well, in 65, Pontiac was thinking about putting Hearst wheels as an option, but they were too expensive. But Hearst had already produced all the ads showing 65 GTOs with Hearst, so Hearst wheels have become synonymous with GTOs. So I've got a, quite a few collection of Hearst wheels. We're really into them. So what are we going to have a look at next? Now, we saw the 64. Now we're going to have a look at a 65? 65. Well, let's go look. Hey. A 1965 GTO is a big part of your collection. I understand you own four of them, but this is one of your favorites. This is one of my favorites, basically because of the color and it's got a racing history. Whoever had this car a long time ago, and I've, I have met the man, uh, put a 421 on it, and he was racing up in South Glens Falls where it was track champion two years in a row. But I basically bought it because of the color. The color is pretty rare. Now you also own three others. I have three other GTOs. We'll take a look at out front. One's a Mayfair Maze, yellow and black top, tri-power car. Then I have a blue charcoal post car that actually my buddy here, Dean, who I call my son, uh, restored, and then we swapped cars. And then I have a race car that came out of Falls Rivers, Connecticut, which is right down the road. We can take a look at that one. Well, let's go look at it. Okay. Wow, Paul, this really is a race car. Well, it was a race car. I don't race it anymore. I bought it locally here um, from Falls Village, Connecticut. There was a little Pontiac dealership there. And actually, for the littlest dealership, it sold the most cars for two years in a row in Connecticut. And the father's son, Denny, used to race this car on the weekends at Dover. Basically, what he did was take the magnetic sign off his father's wrecker and put it on the side of the door and go off and race with it and come back and have some fun with it. I kind of put it up a little bit more like a race car should have been, you know, with the 360 horsepower and the sign and the, um, the name on the side, which represents all my grandchildren. Well, I tell you, the graphics on this thing are beautiful. It really looks nice, but you, you got to see under the hood. Take a look here. This is the motor he raced with. It was a 421 motor disguised to look like a 389. So he basically was cheating with it. Uh, he was cheating in more than one way, too, because he installed a Ram Air cam. And in the old days, they could check the lift of the cam, but they couldn't check the duration. And the Ram Air cam's got the same lift as the stock cam. So he was actually gaining probably 30 or 40 horsepower, which enabled him to run right on the record. But he never would win two weeks in a row because he didn't want to get torn down. When we come back, a lot more with Dean and Paul in the western part of Massachusetts, right here on Cruising New England. Honey, what are you doing out there? Waiting on the next Super Blowout three-day only mega sale. You don't need a sale, you need MPD. NPD's everyday prices are competitive with most sales, and orders arrive fast from our four strategically located superstores. National Parts Depot has quality parts for Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle, GTO, Firebird, Ford, and Chevy truck. For your free catalog, go online or call toll-free. Working beats waiting. Do you have a child with food allergies? Does your school need help managing food allergies? I'm Gina Manette Lee, a nationally recognized food allergy author, educator, and consultant. I provide a common sense, fact-based approach to managing food allergies at home and at school. For more information, visit foodallergyconsulting.com. Every week in the summer, I drive on Vermont's most dangerous road. We tailgate, we speed, and we crash. Around here, those are the rules of the road. Thunder Road, that is. But Vermont roads aren't a racetrack, and there are different rules to follow. Focus on the road conditions. Focus on the lanes around you, and focus on the drivers near you. Because at the end of the day, we want you to get home safely. That way we all win. Sponsored by the Vermont Governor's Highway Safety Program. When September comes, the party begins. Cruise on over to the Big E in West Springfield, Massachusetts, September 18th through October 4th. I'm Paul Minette of Cruising New England at McMulkin Chevrolet. McMulkin has shipments arriving weekly of the new C7 Corvette. People from all over the country buy their Corvettes from McMulkin Chevrolet to get the highest level of value and service. McMulkin Chevrolet always has over 250 Corvettes in stock in their three-story climate control building. Remember, all roads lead to McMulkin Chevrolet. Check them out at McMulkin.net. The Thompson Auto Group. We're back, and I'm here in Western Massachusetts with Dean and Paul. Here come the judge. So now it's your turn. Tell us about your judges. 
This is a 1969 GTO Judge, one of about 6,700 and change built. Um, it's a rare Judge because of the color. It's painted Liberty Blue. The first 2,000 were painted Carousel Red, a bright orange color. Then they painted them any Pontiac color or special order color that you wanted. This one has 33,600 original miles, original drivetrain, all documentation, rammer, three engine, four speed, close ratio, and 390 gears in the back. And you also have another one to show us. Yep. This is a 1970 Judge, uh, one of 17 built with the last quarter option 455 HO and a very rare color called mint turquoise. So Dean, you really keep this thing clean. That's quite an engine. It's a 1969 Ram Air 3, 1075 to 1 compression ratio, 366 horse is what the factory rated at. Rochester four bell carburetor and Ram Air induction. And what do you have under this? Is it the same or is there, is there a difference? That's the last quarter option 455 HO rated at 370 horsepower. They put those in a few GTOs at the end of the 1970 model. Now was this one of the fastest uh, GTOs made or was kind of a middle of the line? Uh, it was middle of the road, uh, wasn't really on par with the Hemis or the Cobra Jets, um, but it was a pretty good street racer. Now how rare are the judges? Now they only made them, what, three years? Three years, 69, 70, and 71. Uh, in 1970 it was 3,600 and change judges, and in 1971 it was about 357. And they also made a convertible too, didn't they? Yes, yep, they made them all three years, 1971 being the rarest with 17 produced. So Dean, tell us about the graphics on this. Well, in 1970, these were called eyebrow stripes. Um, they came in various colors depending on the color that the car was painted. Could you pick your own stripe or it came with that, with that color car? Uh, you could have the dealer switch the color of the stripe after you took delivery of the car, but the factory put certain color stripes on certain paint jobs. Okay, now how about the interiors? Were the interiors all the same? No, not all the same. Uh, most GTOs came with bucket seats, uh, automatic on the floor, or three or four speed on the floor. Uh, the judges came standard with a three speed manual, four speed being optional, automatic being optional. Um, rally gauges was an option, AM FM radios was an option, 8 track player was an option. Well, there's a lot to these cars, and I, I tell you, they're one of my favorites, mainly because of the look of the car. Those graphics are beautiful, and uh, it's one of my favorite GTOs. It's a great looking car. Dean, when I was a kid, if you owned one of these, you were really cool. Let's take a look back at some of the GTOs we saw with my friend Rick Schmidt at National Pods Depot in Ocala, Florida. So Rick, this is one of your favorite drivers. It's one of my favorite Pontiacs in the collection period to drive, to look at uh, the whole package of the 1967 GTO. I was driven home from the hospital when I was born in a 67 GTO and I've, and I've loved these cars my, my entire life. Well, let's have a look at under the hood because I know this is in pristine condition. It's, I drive it a lot, so I wouldn't call it a show car, but it's a, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty darn nice one. It's a 400, and it's, the H, it's got the HO engine in it, the higher, the, the higher horsepower 400 that was available that year. And uh, a lot of people think, you know, always look for a tri-power under the hood of a GTO of this vintage, but in, in 67, it was, they went from 389 to 400, and just the single four barrel carburetor. But in reality, these 400 HOs at 360 horsepower were better performers than the 389 tri-power. This is a faster car and it drives beautifully. It rides nice and soft and it's a real pleasurable car to drive. Before we go for a ride, Paul, I need to tell you a little bit about this car. It's, it's not just a tri-power 389. This is actually a California car. It was sold new in Hollywood. And uh, not, you won't find too many GTOs at shows that still retain all of their original uh, California emissions. So this has got its original air pump and all the filtration and, and, and tubes that was uh, required uh, you know, at that time in California for their emissions laws. And some of those pieces were really, really hard to come up with and, and, and figuring out how to plumb it and get it, get it operating was, uh, was a bit of a trick. So there's not many of these around, really? Not many of these around. I think there's only uh, two or three of them kicking around in the GTO circles. That, uh, that still have, you know, California cars that still have their California emissions on them, tri-powers. Does it take any power away having the emissions in there? No, no, it's, it's really just, it's really just a, a pump blowing air into, uh, into the exhaust. It's we're gonna it's, find out though, aren't we? No, we're gonna find out, well, absolutely, let's, let's it runs good. Let's find out. All right, let's go see if we can't burn some rubber.
We're back in Western Massachusetts with Dean and Paul. This is a gorgeous 67 GTO. Well, Paul, this is unique in the sense that I bought it brand new. I'm the original owner. I even have the original bill of sale to this car, which I ordered in November of 1966 and took delivery in January of 67. I've had the car ever since. Under the hood is the original 400 motor. And yes, it does have a tri-par, which wasn't offered in 67. And it's almost the reason I did not buy the car. But when I bought the car, the dealer made a deal with me that if I would buy the car, he'd put a tri-par on it for me. And that's what he did in the summer of 67. Wow, summer of 67, Paul. Every one of the miles on this car is yours? That's right. It's all mine. The interior is all original. And as you can see, there's a little wear right here. I'm getting in and out of it. It was a used car. Um, the rugs, everything original, it's black, got a console, four-speed, tack gauges, wood wheel, and an AM radio. And you'll notice it doesn't have power steering or power brakes. That's because in my day and age, we wanted to go fast. And power steering and power brakes took horsepower away. And a uh, famous magazine came here and did some pictures of it and convinced me not to restore it. They said, you've got all these restored cars, leave this with an original. It's only original once, so I've decided that's what I'm going to do. Now, why would you do that? You know, the way that all the other ones are all restored, why would you keep this one original? Well, I feel like I would ignore it, not take fixing the little imperfections maybe that developed over 69,000 miles that I have on this car. But uh, I think I made the right decision. I do too, because it looks great. Thank you. Well, what else are we going to have a look at? Well, we got a 73, and we got um, a 66, and a 72. Well, let's go have a look let's at them. This is quite an amazing paint job on this 66 GTO. Well, thank you. Um, it's got a lot of comments on that. It's one best of paint two or three times. It's kind of got an electric look to it. Um, as a matter of fact, I had it out last Sunday at Pauling, New York, and on a street show, and it took best to show. And that's pretty hard to do on a street show against all the competition I had. And uh, I think they like the Hearst wheels, and with the combination of the white interior and the red pinstripe, which matches the red walls, it's got a kind of a dynamic look to it. It's gorgeous. What do we have under the hood? Well, we got a 389 engine 360 horse with ram air which is extremely rare and i can't document it but it would be strange for this car to have no heater or no radio in new england so i imagine somebody bought this with the only intention of racing it is there any way you could add that to it or is that something you're just going to leave the way it was when when it was originally produced i i wanted to leave it original as possible so i left everything just the way it was so paul can you show us what's under the hood certainly And right here is the original steel ram air pan. That's a very rare option. There's probably less than 150 of these produced. And the motor has 360 horse with a close ratio four speed and has 390 rear end. The only thing not original on this car is the 390 rear end. I assume they must have blown it up when they were racing it. Why do I say they were racing it? Because it has no heater and you'll notice no radio. And there's no undercoating on the car. And they tell me therefore it would have no warranty either. Now, I look under the hood and it looks like it just came out of factory. You must spend a lot of time detailing your automobiles. Absolutely. It's a never-ending process. Clean them every time we take them out, and then we put them back, and then we take them out again. Is it work or is it a labor of love? Labor of love. So, guys, what are we going to see next? A 1972 GTO. Let's go look at it. So Dean, 1972 was kind of like the demise of this GTO, wasn't it? The GTO became an option in 1972 from regular model status, and they didn't make very many of them. Uh, there was about 137 post coupes, and this is a post coupe. It's got the door frame around the door there. So Dean, this was the last year of this body style. That's correct. In 72, the GTO became an option. Uh, this is a post coupe, and they made about 137 of these. It has a 455 HO, M22 close ratio four speed, and a 373 12 bolt positive traction rear end. So behind you is another late GTO. A 1973 GTO, which high performance cars called Car of the Year due to the 455 Super Duty engine that they put in it. And so, uh, was that a real popular car in that year? No, it wasn't as popular as the earlier 60s GTOs, uh, but it's as fast. So you could see this thing starting to swing down for GTO, couldn't you? Yeah, towards the end of the, the model run, yeah. 
So Dean, what's really interesting about that car? Well, this car has a one of the 11 factory ram air systems produced by Pontiac in 1973 for the GTO or the Grand Am, which they canceled due to noise restrictions and the noise coming through the hood from the engine. When we come back, a lot more with Dean and Paul and their Pontiacs right here on Cruising New England. This episode of Cruising New England is being brought to you by Shappy Vintage Auto Sales. Hi, I'm Ken Mazzilli from Kenny's Garden Center and Landscaping. We've been here in Faven, Mass for over 30 years. Come see our great selection of annuals, perennials, hanging plants, and nursery stock. We have a great selection of mulch, wall stone, field stone, cobblestones, and pavers. Make your project come alive with our large selection of statuary. For holidays, weddings, and special occasions, don't forget to visit our florist and gift shop. Contractors and consumers alike, come to Kenny's. Hi, my name is Neil Murley, Murley's Car Care Center. We are Southern New England's Sunoco Race Fuel dealer. Save on Sunoco Race Fuel to right off Route 3 in Weymouth Heights. And good luck on the track. Hi, I'm Paul Manette, and I want to tell you about a new book coming out this spring, Collections American Style. I've teamed up with Berkshire Hills Publishing to create this beautiful full-color limited edition book. It features hundreds of full-color photographs, collector profiles, and historical tidbits. You'll see some of the finest automobile collections in the country and memorabilia from the Wizard of Oz to the world's largest Kodak camera collection. Reserve your copy today at cruisingnewengland.com. Would you like to see more Cruising New England television? Now you can watch Cruising New England every day on our website television show at cruisingnewengland.com. Check out Cruising New England Productions' website. You'll see updated information about our fun car show series, including the Magical Mystery Cruise, the Circle of Champions, the Super Wheel Showdown, and the Spooktacular Cruising Classic. Also, subscribe to Cruising New England Magazine. We feature some of the hottest rides in the Northeast, along with event listings and a whole lot more. Don't miss a single issue. And if you want more information about sponsorships, advertising, or personal appearances by Paul Manette, email us at cruisenewengland at AOL.com. You know, Paul, not only do you have a tremendous collection of Pontiacs, but you've got some cool memorabilia. Well, thank you, Paul. I just started collecting this stuff. I've got enough cars, my garages are filled, so I thought I'd add some decorations that would be meaningful to me and whoever likes Pontiacs. And the one question I get on a lot of my 64 through 67 cars is, is it a real Royal Bobcat? Because those were made in Michigan. I says, well, yes and no. Because when I was young, I joined the Royal Pontiac Club and they sent you these kits. And these are the two boxes the kits came in. And that's the actual uh, things inside the box that made this car go a second to a second and a half faster. And that was what made GTOs pretty well king on the drag strip. They're beautiful, and to have the original boxes really adds a lot of value to it. I just got them. You know, when I was young, I threw them away. And some man came here, uh, Greg Hawksley, and he said, Paul, these belong with you. And he actually gave them to me. I was very impressed. So they were the empty boxes? They were the empty boxes. It's amazing. But on eBay, 500 bucks for those boxes. Wow, can you imagine? That bucket on the floor, Paul, is not just a rag bucket. No, it's not, Paul. This bucket is very rare. People, of course, didn't keep them. These were the bucks that Hearst wheels came in, two in each bucket, and they're very, very hard to find. I was lucky, my buddy Dean Kelly bought this for me for Christmas. I've never seen one before, and I see a lot of stuff, so it's, it's unbelievable that I even get a chance to see one of those. It's really nice. Nice thing to have in your garage. Absolutely. Thank you. So, Paul, a lifetime of GTOs. Have you ever had the urge to buy anything but a GTO? Actually, the car that probably really would attract my attention would be a 1966 Oldsmobile 442 with the tri-power. So now you've got a you know a collection. Uh, is there anything you're you're looking for in particular right now? Actually, right now I'm restoring one more car. And then I want to concentrate on the things hanging on my wall, little uh, rare Pontiac parts and pieces. I've pretty well run out of garage space. I mean, how do you, how do you have the foresight to keep a car for the life of its for the life of its its journey? You know that question they ask me all the time, and I, I just fell in love with the car, and I just couldn't part with them. I mean, everybody comes up and says, "You got any of these cars for sale?" 
and I just can't do it. I just can't do it. Now I noticed on your home that you have a lot of garages here. Uh, now they weren't all there at one time. No. As the collection grew. Yeah. yeah. Hang on. Dean Kelly. Thank you, Paul. Paul Bennon for a great day here today in Western Massachusetts. I'm Paul Minette. Until next time, I'll be cruising New England.